There you go, Mr. Gay. Some water if you want to drink. Want some water? Want some water? That a girl. That a girl.
done. All right, wet your whistle. <laughs> uh. All right, so we woke up today. Um, I think we woke up to about 76, 77 degrees. So that's what makes it toughest when you're living off grid is when that overnight temperature doesn't really cool down enough for you. Man, it can make it kind of challenging. Now we do have the root cellar that we're um, prepared to use in case it gets really sticky. And we also use the outdoor kitchen. Uh, that's why we built it uh, as long as well as, you know, being able to process food out there in the summertime and keep the heat out of the house. So if you guys are new around here uh, to our channel, my wife and I live in a log cabin and we've been here for about a decade and we live off grid with no public utilities. And when we started this journey, we wanted to keep everything really simple, really cost effective. We wanted to get the most return for our money on things. A lot of people ask how we lived here for over a decade now with no solar power. And why don't we ever have solar power? And I always explain to them that it's ROI, return on investment. So once we got out here and we were without electricity for a little while, and then we started being friends with the Amish and we learned all these great ways that we can incorporate that into our lifestyle where we could save a ton of money on buying things that help us with creature comforts. And uh, we were able to put in a lot of systems that made sense environmentally, like our composting system here, which they don't really do. Um, and also saved us money on things like solar and stuff like that until the technology got better and better and better. We just waited for 10 years and watched the technology increase. So all the people that bought 10 years ago, right, are behind the eight ball and spent a ton of money. You always try to wait uh, when new things come out, especially electronics, uh, you know, until everyone else gets them. They work out the bugs and then uh, you can get some benefits from that. <laughs> That's my philosophy and so far it's paying off. So we did a video a while ago, I did, because this is my job. I'm the uh, waste management specialist here off grid. But we did a video a while ago where we talked about the composting toilet and we used the five gallon bucket system and we had like 25 buckets put together and we were coming out of winter and a lot of people enjoyed that video. They got a lot of information off of it. Um, but I will tell you that we broke the record. <laughs> There's like 66 buckets here. That's the other beauty of the five gallon bucket composting system is it is super flexible. If I have, you know, uh, something going on where I can't get to the buckets, I can just put the lid on them and throw them over out of the way and not worry about them. Uh, in winter time, a lot of times here, it's uh, really cold and icy and I don't feel like moving snow or digging into the frozen pile uh, to do the composting toilet. So I let the pile uh, of buckets stack up and the other beauty part of it is a lot of times you guys can get these buckets for free um, you know we get them at restaurants and stuff like that food grade buckets they won't last as long as the thicker bucket uh, but they're free and so uh, here I am with my collection and I'm getting those all cleaned out today um, so I'm kind of paying for putting it off right because now it's you know 90 something degrees uh, this stuff's been out in the heat for a little bit. <laughs> so you're lucky today you don't have smell-o-vision. Sometimes we say, we wish you had smell-o-vision. Today you're lucky that you don't. And actually it doesn't really smell. That's the other beauty part about the composting system that we're using is that it doesn't smell. In the house we have a, a place where we use the restroom and then you just use sawdust on it. It has to be um, untreated wood. So basically we have a sawmill up front, you know, we cut firewood. We always have sawmill. We can go to the sawmill uh, yard if you guys have a lumber yard in your area. A lot of times they'll let you pull up with your pickup truck. You guys can fill that up uh, for free and then take it back and use on your homestead or at your off-grid location. I will tell you guys that um, one of the major benefits Okay, or one of the major things you guys want to consider is definitely having um, sawdust around your homestead. It's an insulator. Uh, like, okay, here's a couple examples. The ice houses that a lot of the Amish use are just basically the ice cut out of the pond, piled up in a shed-like structure, and then they just pour the sawdust all over it. Just pack it in with sawdust. And that sawdust actually insulates the ice, and they're able to have ice from you know, winter to winter, okay? It's incredible, right? Also, if you have a dead animal, let's say in the winter time or 
um, you just can't get into the ground, maybe it's super frozen, you can actually bury a dead animal in the sawdust and the sawdust will break the animal completely down, okay? A lot of great benefits. For the five gallon composting system, it's basically a cover material. You do your business, you put your sawdust on top of it, and that's it. And if you can smell it, then you just put a little bit more sawdust on it and the smell will go away. We've been doing this for a decade and we've had plenty of people come by here totally skeptical and they've never, they all said, I can't believe you can't smell it. <laughs> And we have no air conditioning in our house, folks. So our house right now is probably about 90 something degrees. So we have the windows open later on in the daytime. We'll show you one day how we beat the heat around here. I'll give you some good tips if you're living like we do. Or even if you have solar power and you want to run your air conditioning less, there's a couple of tricks that we've learned over the last 10 years. So now one of my problems, back to this thing here. <laughs> One of my problems I had was, you know, I let the, the, it's easy to let the buckets pile up too because they're behind, I was putting them behind the station here, okay? Uh, so it's out of sight, out of mind, right? <laughs> but it turns into a big mess. We can't cut the grass when uh, Stacy likes to cut the grass. When she cuts the grass, it sprays all over the buckets. You guys can see some of the buckets have, you know, grass sprayed all over them. And then you bring that into the house, so I don't like that. And um, also some of them were sitting on the just dirt, right? So the bottom of the barrels or buckets get the mud and everything caked on them and then you bring them inside to you. So I'm gonna kind of clean that up today, show you guys what I'm gonna do. In this kind of a setup, I know I'm just kind of talking right now, but let me just get it out of the way. <laughs> this kind of setup right here, this middle compartment is usually designed to store your straw, right? Like you'd put a couple bales of straw in there, the roof on top is to collect rain and it also will keep your uh, straw kind of dry, okay? The problem with, uh, for us is that I have straw, like, you know, because we're a working homestead and we use straw a lot around here. I have um, a lot of it. So I don't want to just drag over a couple of bales, leave them out here, they'll get wet, the strings will break, you know, just stuff like that. So I only bring it over when I actually need it. So that space just kind of ended up being like a dead space, you know? And, I don't like that. So I think the answer is to put a pallet here from the back. I'm gonna put it in the front here and I'll be able to put all my buckets inside here. Also the wind, uh, we get bad north winds, that's the north, and the blows the buckets all around. So now they'll be protected in here. They'll be up off the ground, which they were on the other side. I had too many buckets and ran out of pallet space. <laughs> but this will be a little more tidy, okay? And then I'll put all my buckets in there and then it'll be a lot more organized. If you guys got any questions about uh, the composting toilet system or um, you know anything you're seeing right here, make sure you leave a comment down below. We like to answer questions sometimes. We have time to do it and we're hanging out, maybe unwinding, and we'll always come by and try to get uh, the questions answered. Obviously, we can't answer every single one, but on videos that are information important, we always try to get back to the comment section and answer comments okay now I'm down to like the last four or five buckets there and then uh, whatever that is ten buckets basically we're washing with um, biodegradable soap dr. Browner's biodegradable soap so you don't want to put anything there it's gonna kill your bacteria and stuff like that you want all that stuff to be as natural as possible and you don't need a lot of it each bucket just it gets a little bit and then I recycle the water from bucket to bucket to bucket and then everything works out fine. All right, so a lot of people do ask us, you know, like why we don't have an outhouse? And we kind of thought about an outhouse, you know, when we first got here. But I think that's one of the things Stacy just wasn't too keen on was going outside in the dead of winter to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And that's a good call for us because as we stayed here and we learned more stuff, uh, you know, with the Amish, they actually have a trap door on their outhouses and then they send the kids in, they scoop it all up, throw it on the manure spreader, and then they spread it out in the fields, which is highly unrecommended. <laughs> Don't do that. So I've been talking with them and trying to get them uh, hip on this and they actually really like it because they don't like going outside to use the restroom either and in the summertime it's not so much the cold but it's the snakes ask anybody that's ever been around an outhouse in the summertime and they'll tell you snakes and spiders oh my 
So like all good plans, I uh, had to come up with an alternative. And the other reason why we didn't go with a septic system is because they're expensive. And I'm not saying they all fail, but I'm saying they all fail. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before you have to spend money. Um, if you do the maintenance, you know, you're pretty good. I've heard people have them a long time and have no problems, but I've heard a lot more people have them and have a lot of problems. And they collapse and they have to be pumped out. And it's just a lot of extra work and a lot of extra expense. And with no benefit, what's the benefit? Only benefit is that we're flushing what they call waste, using water and then sending it into a lagoon or a tank to just sit there and do nothing, right? So that doesn't seem like good benefit for me. Remember this, when you guys come here, you're always gonna see ideas and tricks that you guys can get the most bang for your buck, but also, okay, get tips for uh, uh, redundancy tips. So you have multiple ways to do something, or you have one thing that can do multiple things. That way you guys keep your spending down, you get more use out of the tools that you have around your homestead. So that's why we didn't go with the uh, outhouse. And then some of them, they dig the holes and then they have to move them around all the time. And there's like, again, no benefit to the land. It's actually a detriment. Uh, outhouses actually aren't that great, you know, for the land. You know, it's not a good environmentally way to do it. All right, that's what I found in my research. Then, just like all of our other systems, I guess you would say, that we haven't borrowed from the Amish, we go back in time and we try to find out how they did it a long time ago. Like, what's the old ways? And the composting toilet method has been around thousands and thousands of years. It, and it produces a great compost um, that you can use in your garden or around your non-edible bushes if you're paranoid or um, just around your shrubs and your baby trees or whatever at your house. Uh, just a place for you to put it. It doesn't smell or anything, okay? So the system basically is you use the buckets and you fill up a bin for one year, okay? And I've got all the videos on this. I have a whole playlist together for you guys. Click that playlist and get educated. Then I'll fill this bin up for a year. So this bin right here is the bin for 2020. I'll fill that up till the end of the year in the fall, I'll dump that one out, spread it in the garden and whatnot. You guys will be here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And then what we do is uh, start to fill that up for 2021. And then you rotate. So while that one's being filled up in 2021, this one sets for the whole year. Now, if you want to, you could put uh, that middle one instead of storage could be another bin. And if you're paranoid, you could do like two years on each one. So then if you put a couple more bins, you could just let them go longer and longer. But I'll, I want to show you guys something if you do that. Let me show you just so you can get an idea. So this right here is the bin that we're using right now. And it'll get fuller and fuller. It'll actually be higher than this box that it's in, slightly higher, okay? So don't worry about that, it's no problem, right? But you can see how full that is. Now in contrast, this bin looked just like that one at the end of last year. And you can see how much it's shrunk. It's all the way going down, see? See, so as that breaks down and it decomposes, you'll actually, you know, it'll go down, 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 down. So if you just leave it there, eventually it'll just kind of melt into the earth and become part of the dirt around that area. And you can tell, look how green the grass is up against there. You know, versus like out there, if you look behind there, if you can see that, you can see that there's not much grass. You know, the grass isn't as green as it is right around the box, okay? The other question people has is, is do you put the toilet paper in there? Do you put the, the urine in there? Because a lot of guys like to do urine separators and all that. Okay, well, Doug likes to keep it simple stupid, right? I don't like to cloud it with a bunch of extra stuff and extra steps. You do not have to divert it, okay, your urine. But I will tell you, it will make your buckets lighter, okay? And in the summertime, I'm never going to the pee pee in the bucket. <laughs> I'm outside all day long. And a lot of times we're collecting PP pee -pee for our garden uh, because that's natural nitrogen. We did a video on that too. We'll tell you all this great stuff here at our channel, guys. I hope you guys are really enjoying it.
I really enjoy it. I love learning all this new stuff. I like the challenges of it daily, and I like how it, it presses my mind and, and gets me to think outside the box. You know, we were in that program state before. We were just waking up, you know, going through the motions, going to work, you know, paying our bills, maybe take a vacation if we had enough time and we could save enough money. And, you know, now it's not nothing like that. My life has totally changed the last decade we've been out here. I feel alive and alert, and I feel great, and we don't get sick and we're healthy and we eat food that we grow and we collect rain from the sky and we have man involved as little as possible in our lives <laughs> and holy cow is that working good <laughs> but yeah so you put your your pee and your and your toilet paper everything goes in the bucket okay and then uh you know like i said we got more videos about that well anyways i'm gonna get these buckets finished up i think we got enough talking going on here today and then i got more stuff to do and it's only getting hotter so I'll uh, get this done real quick. Before you guys go, I'll show you what it looks like stacked up in here. And uh, as always, thanks for coming by our place and, and checking out the information that we share with you guys. Um, our true intent is that we have heart of teachers and we just want to help you guys so you can break free and you know live the best life. The life that you want to live, if it's off grid or if you just want to grow more food or if you just want to you know, be a little more sustainable or just learn how to do a few more things around your place, then you found the right channel. So hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up on your way out. And uh, <laughs> that's a hot one. And I'm gonna see you guys on the next video.